Welcome to this week's Empowered Living. I want to begin a new series, and it's a series that's been on my heart, and if you've been coming to Spirit of Life Church, almost every time I've been preaching, it's had this theme about it, but it's about, the, about having God's compassion, about having His heart to go and to reach the lost, but that word compassion means to, to ease their suffering and to meet their need. For example, it says in God's Word that Jesus looked at the multitudes, and He was filled with compassion, and He healed all their sick. Well, right there was easing their sufferings. But then it goes on in the same passage of Scripture, and it says, and then He fed them, and then he, that's where He met their need. And so the compassion of Christ, uh, Paul speaks, that it compels us to go and to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And the word that's wrapping up with me, and that'll be the title of this series as we go forward, is, is love in action. Um... How do we become love in action? Because love is an action. In James, he says this. He says that if faith without works, it's dead. It's useless. It's worthless. Now, that's a hard word. In fact, Martin Luther, he wanted to throw the book of James out of the Bible. And we're glad that he didn't. But part of it is because of this. It's not works that need to be done for salvation's sake. But it's like a, it's like a fruit tree bearing fruit. Because it is a fruit tree, it bears fruit. Fruit is produced. Because we have faith, works are produced out of that faith. If works are being produced out of the faith, then, works, then, then the faith is dead. It's not enough to just have faith alone. Because James goes on to say that faith, uh, even, the, even the devils have faith. But the devils have enough reverence in who they have faith uh, about God that they shudder. And too many times, us, even as Christians, we just become benign in our faith. Uh, it, it's become useless and worthless because we're not using our faith to do anything uh, for the Lord. It says that we show our, our love for God through our obedience to Him. And it says that He created us before the foundation of the world. He created us and purposed us for good works. That's our purpose here to do his works why because he's there he's in heaven so here we are we should be compelled by the faith we have in god not about god uh, but in him in the person of jesus christ his son to go and to do on his behalf now this argument is made and james continue in chapter 2 uh, verses 14 to 26 and, and and even so as he's speaking to the brethren he's speaking to jews he's saying well, Abraham, this is how he was justified. He was justified because when God called Abraham, he went. He believed him that when he said that you would have, you know, descendants that would be beyond the multitude of stars and that would be beyond what you can count uh, 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 sand grains. But not only that, he obeyed and he went. And it was attributed to him as righteousness. And you might say, well, that was Abraham. That was a great father of the faith. Who could ever live up to Abraham? But then James goes on and continues to say in his very nature, in the, same, uh, uh, in the next scripture, he says, well, what about Rahab? She, was, she had works with her faith when she let the spies out. And here this was a prostitute. Can we have the faith of a prostitute to do for the Lord as well? In, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, it says, brothers, he's talking to Christians, believers. He's saying, don't just... Don't, it's not enough to love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And so I want to encourage you here. I'm excited because God has been moving my heart. He's been, he's been directing and guiding me to a new place I've never been before because it's terrifying. And, and it, just, it just frightens me to think, if I step out for God, what if He doesn't show? That's okay. Because I've stepped out for God in accordance and action of, upon my faith. And, and it's a win-win because the person who I'm stepping out for and to is being loved, is being encouraged, is being blessed and prayed for. How is everything wrong in that? And then for me, stepping out in obedience, I'm being encouraged, I'm being built up. And I'm learning to hear the voice of God for my own self and my own life. If I have no direct word from God, I'm still going to go. Why? Because I know that God desires uh, 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 fruit to be born out of a walk in relationship with Him. And Jesus commands us to do as He did. So I don't need a direct word as, Thus says the Lord, coming down from heaven, the, part, uh, you know, the sky is parting, everybody else hears thunder, and I hear God's voice. That would be fantastic, and I can't wait for the day that that happens. But I have a word. I have a word in Matthew I have a word in John, in Luke. I have a, a word in Mark, 
in the book of Acts to go and to do as Jesus did. Jesus was fulfilling, he was the very expression, it says in 1 Corinthians, the very expression of God seen on earth. And so we, knowing what Jesus did, we can do likewise. We can do the same. So I want to encourage you as we go forth in this series of looking at love in action. I'm going to open up something we haven't done in the past podcast of Empowered Living. I'm going to open up the comment section. And I want to open up in it as an avenue and an area to share stories of faith where we're stepping out in the name of the Lord Jesus, declaring His goodness and His love for those around us. We're not just to do... Um, again, we're not to, to love in, in tongue or in word only, but in deed and in truth. Also, what we've been able to do to bless others, whether it be buying a meal, whether it be supplying them with clothes, whether it be helping them fix their car, whatever it may be that they need. But we've got to stop as Christians just talking about our faith and just teaching about our faith. But we've got to start as Christians doing and acting upon our faith. If not, as James says, it becomes worthless and dead and it has no value. So I'm going to open up the comments section for a place for testimonies uh, of where you've prayed for someone, where you've, where you've been able to give or to bless someone or meet somebody's needs, where you've been able to show the compassion of God through the love of Jesus Christ to meet their need or to ease their suffering. And so let's, let's encourage and build each other's faith up, iron sharpening iron, on what God is doing now as we activate our faith. And so let me just pray with you as, as I believe we were going to begin this journey and this walk of love in action. Dear Father God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that you encourage us to, to, to act upon our faith. You say in James that we are to show our faith by our works. Not unto salvation, but to the glory of Jesus Christ. That you commanded us in Matthew 10, 7 and 8 to go and to cleanse the lepers and to heal the sick and to cast out devils and to raise the dead. Freely we receive. Now is our turn to freely give. I pray for your grace and strength to all that watch, to all that listen, to go and to do as Jesus did. I thank you for this, Father. Empowered by you, Holy Spirit. Amen.